All right, welcome back. Another episode. We're sitting down with Miles Thornton, uh, wide receiver, University of Georgia. Flips a couple positions, finding his way a little bit, as he told me a little bit before. But uh, right away, first thing I got to know, right? Last year, freshman year, you win the championship. What is the feeling when you see that ring for the first time? Dude. <laughs> I mean, like, you just be like, dude. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's your, first, it's your freshman year. You don't really know what to expect. You're going into a new environment. Um, you really, you really learning the ropes like your freshman year. You know what I mean? Like you're seeing what you're getting into and, and, and the people you're gonna be around for the next three or four years. So to go from being in high school to being a national champion in one year is like it's it's almost unfathomable. And when you see the rain for real and they got your name carved out on the side and you like, this is actually like this is real. Bro, it's like <laughs> I can't even describe the feeling. You look at it, it's just it's, it's disbelief every time I see the little case with the rain. Is there a sense of like I made it when you like are in that moment? I don't know if it's if it's I made it. It's more like because, you know, it's, again, it's your first year. Right. You know what I mean? And, and you kind of like, yeah, I, I made it to the highest heights, but you like, okay, but let's let's go get another one. Let's do some more. Like, right. We, we got so much more to do that it's like, you don't really sit back and take the time and say, I made it. You sit there and say, what else can you do, though? I feel like the mind. And how can I involve myself? Right, involve yourself. I feel like the mindset could yeah. be, my foot's in the door now, but now how can I contribute at a greater level? Exactly. That's that's really the whole mindset going into this season, uh, especially for a lot of us because we're a young team. We really are. Uh, like, I know a bunch of draft picks the past couple of years. A bunch of them. Like, and so we're a really young team, and everybody has that, that kind of, yeah, we were there for that. We were part of that, but how can we do more? How can we really, like, Mm. You know, and what's this moment for, for each and every one of us? Are there any guys um, in the class before you that have won two in two years that are just like, like, do they ever like brag to you, like, yeah, I'm here two and two? And like, does that ever come up at all? <laughs> uh, not, not really. I think a lot of us are, are pretty humble. Um, you won't really find a guy, a diva type of guy on the team, really. Uh, Georgia is a Georgia are really good. We really good at recruiting team players. Right. We got a lot of a lot of team players and people that that even with success they know how to take it gracefully. Mm. So win and and uh, and just have lots of success and whatnot. You don't see us you know boasting it or rubbing it in people's face and whatnot. Just because one thing that uh, Kirby says a lot is uh, real winners know how to win. That's a part of it. Is like right. What do you do after you win? Or a win? So. so there's nothing like in the water there. It's just natural people that yeah, are nah. that are good people. Yeah. Nah. And then the other thing is everybody, bro. We be it, it's really a team. Like we really, it's a family. It's more than a team. It's a family. Mm. When you see those videos of us excited when one of our boys get drafted or whatnot, that's real. Like those are real, genuine reactions. We we all sit in the facility together watching it, enjoying somebody else's moment but the fact that we can you know take a moment and not look at ourselves and look at somebody else's accomplishment and be actually happy be thankful for somebody else that's what separated Georgia for, from a lot of the schools that I was recruited by it's like a everybody can win mindset exactly uh, and that's that's every day that's yeah every day. that's the standard now talking about the standard as I was, I was just about to bring it up yes. What's I know it probably hasn't changed because of repeated success. So now I won't ask you uh, how. I'll ask you what is the standard. Man, <laughs> you would think that's an easier question than it is. You would think that there's like a set. Oh, this is the standard. You know, really the standard is just it's your best and all. The, like the standard is just effort. That's really it. Like you put your best put forward regardless of what you do and you have the courage to start you got the heart to finish so you take that first step and then you see it through but you see it 
percent. That's the standard. Is don't do nothing halfway. Don't kind of do it. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna say you're gonna do something. If you're gonna commit to something, commit to it. Do it. So I, that's that's what the standard is really. It's just mm. looking for that effort, making sure that you, you do do the task, get the job done. Is there any like message that the coaching staff really puts out there that really puts stuff into place? Because you hear a lot of teams like, yeah, always that same kind of message, like always giving your best, like not 50%. Yeah. But like, is there like a certain process or like an activity or something that maybe it's like an accountability thing that you guys have? Yeah, uh, we got this thing called um, uh, Skull Sessions. Pretty much what that is, is um, we go in, we, we really get to, get to know about our teammates. So this goes back to me talking about the whole family piece and like how it's bigger than a team because we we sit down and we take the time to actually learn about our teammates and why they're playing the sport. Like a mm-hmm. big question the thing that you said, what uh, what's one thing that they drive home a lot is what's your what's your brother's why? Like what's the dude sitting next to me? Why does he do what he do? Why does he get up every day and go lift these weights? Why is he going so hard? Because if I can know his why, if I understand why he's doing all this, why he's going so hard, and that can motivate me to go home. You know what I mean? Right. I know he's doing this for his family back home. They don't come from the best situation and whatnot. So this is all he got. If this is all he got, he's giving this much effort. Why can't I put in a little bit more? You know what I mean? So that's that's the biggest that's the biggest thing is it's connection. The biggest thing that uh, they drive home a lot is is connect, 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 connect. Talk to your teammates, talk to your brothers, because you can't really be a family, you can't be a team if we don't know each other. So. Man, I mean, teams win championships. You can't win by yourself in football, the game of football. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen maybe like an all star quarterback with nobody else around them and win, you know? So, and that's yeah, just, no. it doesn't go, to go for talent, it goes for connection. I feel like what you said and what I talked to Jacob yesterday, uh, the connection is there, and that seems like a a good solid uh, formula for what you guys have accomplished. So, you guys play everywhere, right? SEC schedule. You're going to all the big places, biggest, basically the biggest brand in college football, right? What's the best atmosphere that you maybe have played at? Doesn't have to be SEC, but not a home game for you guys. Not a home game. Come on, that's okay. the, that's that's the obvious answer. Come on. I was about to say though, with Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee was that that game was a picture like that. I came out the tunnel and was like, bro, you talking about made it moment? I came out the tunnel and was like, oh, whoa, this is real. Hold on, this is actually real. But I say, uh, the championship, my fault. So far? <laughs> National championship and so far, like, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different feeling. Was that your first it's time a, in that, in that stadium? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it is kind of new. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you see the – and then there's – people like don't the know what the stadium like like, Yeah, and it's open on both sides. And so, like, you can see outside from the stadium. But, like, with the uh, the jumbo trying that goes all the way around like that, bro, so far I was like oh, – I can't even – I can't even describe it. It was like, this is insane. You know like, – That's the big, biggest stage to be on, and I mean – the one thing I think about when I see when I think of SoFi, I just the image of Dwayne the Rock Johnson on the field before the Super Bowl like two years ago. <laughs> that's like the first thing I think of when I think of that. But um, yeah, I mean that's that stadium is brand new, state of the art. It, it it could be a dome, right? It like overtracks sometimes, or yeah, is it? yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's gonna be like the spot for a lot of big games, I think. That stadium. Okay, that's the location now. If you could play one team you haven't played yet, who would you pick in? Who who are you who are you trying to not call out, but who would you like to compete with? That's a good way to put it. Bama. Yeah? I just haven't I, I haven't played that's true. yet, so I will yeah, I would want to see Bama. Uh, that's really it, because uh growing up it was always Georgia and Bama in my household. So I would definitely want to see see Alabama. I want to see what they work on. Plus, like I, uh, my teammate from high school went to Alabama, so huh? um, definitely want to definitely want to uh, get after those guys. See what they 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> wait, wait, you're growing up like a couple hours fr away from campus. You got where you was you and your family all you know Georgia fans or was it split or was it anything? Uh, it was, it was, it was kind of split. Like my my parents were Georgia fans. One of my brothers was a Georgia fan, and then my other brother was a Bama fan, and I kind of. Kind of teetered. <laughs> oh, no. I, kinda, I mean, now I'm a Georgia fan, but I'm saying I was teetering back then. Oh man, <laughs> that I mean, the one thing my I remember my dad said this to me playing baseball. I was, you know, Yankees fans. We're from we were from Staten Island originally. We moved here like when I was ten ish. My parents moved us, mm -hmm. but so my dad was like, Charlie, like you go play pro in baseball, whatever. I will be a fan of whatever team you get drafted to, as long as it's not the Red Sox. He made that very clear. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, but I get it how it could be split. I mean, you have a bunch of powerhouse teams down there. I mean, Georgia, but before two years ago, haven't won anything. I think in like four years it was. I'm pretty yeah, sure. It was a little dry yeah. yeah. So I mean, I can imagine the uproar in like in Athens. Not only like this past parade, but the one before that, the first one. You know. Talk about that a little bit. What was the best memory from the parade itself? Uh, best memory from the parade? Bruh. Stetson's speech. That's, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Do you know, do you know about Stetson's speech? I don't think I ever know. After we get, after we get done with this, go look up Stetson. Stetson Bennett, uh, 2022 championship parade speech. It is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. All I say is, uh, not about the X's and O's, it's about the Jimmys and Joes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got to go see that. that. It would make sense that you see that, but that was definitely, uh, it's that had to be my funniest memory. Is he, is he a good sport about all like the jokes that get made about him being so old and stuff like that for a college guy? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean like <laughs> uh, definitely is, with anybody, they're always going to try to find something to, to <laughs> knack you about or not, you know whatever. He still won two championships. Two. <laughs> Heisman finalists, you know, you know got drafted. I mean? So it's like, <laughs> say what you want. That's, that's kind of his, say what you want, but he still made it, so. So now your family, right? You're in Ath oh, you're in Georgia, split maybe fan base. Now recruiting. Did you have any other teams that might have like shown interest to you? Because I know you were uh, you were a preferred walk on to Georgia. Did any other schools like offer you fully, or what was like the the give and go there? So with me, um, what a lot of people don't know is that like COVID really did a lot of damage. You know what I mean? And uh, if I knew what I know now. Uh, especially like if any if any high school player is watching or whatnot, recruitment is about exposure, getting eyes on you, uh, just getting your name out there as much as you can. That's what the whole game is about. Because uh, like I was, I started all four years of high school, so like there was the dude that just got drafted to the lines or whatnot. Like we played together my freshman year, my sophomore year, and then I was the guy. After that and so you you know doing all of that you expect to be recruited higher and things like that it was just on my part I didn't go to the camps I didn't do the extra camp stuff like that or the rivals 24 7 and whatnot if I had always been told my whole life that um, if you're good enough they'll find you but the way the landscape is changing and whatnot nowadays it's more about putting is you're a brand you're you are a brand yeah so you got to absolutely expose yourself to as many people as you can get your name out there and whatnot. Um, but for me, I uh, I had another PWO offer from Louisville. They uh, they were interested in me for a minute. Um, so that's actually who I was teetering between. It was either I was going to come, I was going to go to Louisville, or I was going to come to Georgia and have the same opportunity and whatnot. But. Uh, I had the hope grant and whatnot, so I, it was a better fit for me to go to Georgia, and it's the best football school. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, outside of that, 
it was uh it was lower D one schools, D two schools, like a uh, shorter university, Barry College. Um I had uh Akron, Ohio, they offered me back in my sophomore season, but then um my junior or senior year they kinda just stopped talking. Uh, part of that is because of I see that a lot with like coaches they offer more people than they can take and then yeah they pretty much listen for their first guy first and then exactly circle so, back if they I, need uh, someone else I think that was my um that was my only like full offer was from Akron and then they stopped talking to me like with COVID hit because I guess with the whole numbers thing and they didn't know how the landscape was going to pan out but then they just kind of ghosted me, which was messed up. I ain't gonna lie, like that was messed up. I would, I would be upset. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it because look how I ended up. But I'm just saying that was kind of like, come on, come on. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, outside at... of that though, it was just small D one, small D two schools. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, I started. I graduated 2020, right when COVID was at its peak. Didn't have graduation. Yeah. Didn't have prom or any, anything like that but I ended up going to uh, Stetson University in Florida for yeah. a year and then transferred back because of money <laughs> and then I went over yeah. to community college and then finished that up in about a year I took more credits than I probably should have but and then Rutgers now I'm on track to still graduate four years but you know you live you live and you learn some people different routes <laughs> That's that's the one thing that I would um, just try to get to, the, especially the younger younger people who are about to go through the same thing I went through. Is just, bruh, go to the camps, get that exposure, do what you can. To and I think every year it gets easier, you know, to put yourself out there because yeah. more and more people get accumulated to social media and how it works. And yeah. there's so many different things to do nowadays, you know. So many, like TikTok is crazy. TikTok, the power in TikTok. Is insane. So, yeah, and it's not even like I'm you got to pay for ads either. You literally can just yeah, nah. flash <laughs> something exciting on the screen, and people will watch it. People go crazy. Just utilize the tools that's on this thing right here. Utilize. Okay. Back to football. How's practice going? <sighs> practice is practice is practice. You know what I mean? It's like it's going good. I mean, you make progress every day. It's just it's tiring. You know, it's a routine. You, you put your body through the same thing over and over again. But mm. outside of that, I mean, um, learning a lot, picking the picking up the playbook really quickly, uh, building chemistry with other players and different positions and whatnot, and just looking good. Everything's looking good though. So. A couple of years ago, when maybe you know an offer got retracted or you weren't sure Georgia would be the choice. Could you ever guess this is where you'd be now? Maybe like four years from ago to now. Like, did all right, I'll rephrase. Did you know that you would end up at a high Division One school like this? Like, did did you always know in the back of your head? I I don't know, cause like I was always I was always projected that way. If that makes sense. So like I was always like the guy. But in my mind, you know what I mean, on the field, I was doing my thing. It's just with the recruiting process, I wasn't really seeing any, anything going on. So, like, in my mind, I'm trying to make it to Alabama and Georgia and Florida and whatnot. So I'm still going hard and whatnot. It's just um, there was a point in time where I really didn't – I just didn't know. I didn't know if I was going it. So uh, I guess not. I guess I couldn't see myself here. At one point in time, but um, it's crazy how much can happen in a couple of years span, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say the way it just panned out and came together at the end is like sometimes, sometimes things happen and you just you got to take a step back and let things be and it works itself out. That's kind of how it. As, how as my grandmother would say, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> it happens for a reason. So, so we sound like we got the same grandma. You want grandma say something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, so now through one year of college, what's the big goal for yourself, personal goal this year? 
seeing the field. I mean, this year is is really just about uh, opportunity. It's about uh, growth. Like, you know, like I said, being a part of being a part of it last year. That's cool. That was great and whatnot. And I really do. I appreciate that um, that process and whatnot, and learning how to be in the system and how to do it. But now this season is really just about um, honing in and figuring out how I can help the team. Where can I fit in to to do uh, like do the best job that I can? So uh, right, whether that's playing special teams, whether that, they need me at running back, need me at receiver, or whatnot, it really doesn't matter to me. I just want to see the field and have an impact somehow, some way. So. I like that answer. Anything tooth and claw right to where a moment, make the best of it, and run from there. Exactly. And now in that, that, I mean, in, that like pursuit, in that pursuit now, what's the biggest challenge you think in front of you? Biggest challenge? Uh, well, we got, a, we got a lot of depth. You know what I mean? We got a lot of depth everywhere. So it's not we're – not, we're not lacking in any area. I think the biggest challenge would just be consistency, just staying consistent doing it right over and over again just to just to uh, catch the eye of the coaches and whatnot. Um, let them see that, okay, we can trust we can trust him. He'll do it right. We know he's going to do it right. He does it right every time we practice and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. I think that's just the biggest challenge is being consistent, doing it over and over again. Uh, not as it might become, just doing it over and over again so I can give myself the best opportunity to actually get a chance. Mm-hmm. And now the coaching staff could be an answer to this next one, but who do you think you're trying to prove yourself to the most this upcoming year? Definitely myself. I mean, like, the coaching staff is a big – I mean, that's a big part of it. You know what I mean? Like, of course, I want to prove to the coaching staff, like, hey, right. y'all, didn't, y'all didn't pick me up for no reason. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if I was doing this for them, then I wouldn't be doing this anymore. Like, this is a hard, this is a hard thing to do. Being a student athlete is not easy in the slightest at all. So if I wasn't doing this for myself, then I would not be playing this sport anymore. So I'm definitely proving to myself that, like, I belong. Bro, yeah, I belong here. There's a reason you're here. You didn't get picked up for no reason. Stop downing yourself. You know what I mean? Um, so just just me, I be, I'm proving I'm proving everything to myself that I'm doing this for a reason. I'm here for a reason. I got this. Do you think people of uh, the people that you're closest to on the team, do you think they have that same goal of trying to prove to themselves more than anybody else? I think so. I think for everybody, it uh, it definitely varies. You know, some people are trying to prove it to themselves. Some people are trying to prove it to to the people back home. You know what I mean? That they invested so much time into them and prove that you know you didn't do this for no reason. Prove it to the coaches. Like I said, they didn't recruit me for no reason. Um, there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways you can draw the uh, the motivation for for you know the why mm. and whatnot. But, um, I say maybe majority think that way. Think that um, I need to focus on me improving myself, but mm. a lot of people still think, you know, about exterior improving it to other people. And whatnot. There's no problem with that. There's, no, of you know, course. I mean, you yeah. always, like the way I'm seeing it, always got to look after yourself, your best interests, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you got to always know, or at the same time, you're part of the team, right? And they count on you yeah. just like you count on them. And that's where yeah. conflicting things can come up, but your job and everyone's job is to make that work and when you do something together as a team, you know, everyone has the benefits of that, as you've seen the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> yourself now. I mean, still about yourself. Who are you comparing yes. yourself who are you comparing yourself to the most at the pro level? Who do you like whose game do you model after? Pick three. Three people. At the pro level? Right. I think because uh like the receiver running back hybrid thing. I'm gonna say now, nah, okay, okay, because I know all my teammates and everybody, and they're gonna. I don't, I don't, I might not have the speed like Debo, but Debo Samuel for sure. How he's built, how he uh, plays receiver and running back, you 
put him in a bad shape, put him out, you know, wherever you put him. And his his frame and size and whatnot, definitely, definitely him. Man, this is kind of hard. <laughs> uh, I would say. Who are the best receiving backs in the league? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what, though? Taysom, Taysom Hill, just because of his versatility. Just because, like, like I said earlier, I played I played every position that there is to play, except except corner. I've never played corner. A corner. It's too, I don't, I don't you really get burnt? Play. Yes. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible hitters. But I can do safety. I can do safety, but not corner. But uh, Taysom Hill, just because, like, he can run the ball, he can throw the ball, you know, he can catch the ball. Every put Taysom Hill, like, he can make some right. shake. So definitely him, too. And then, boy, boy, you put them on spot. This is hard. All right, I, I, I got you. It doesn't it doesn't matter. But, but my point is here, well, a point that I can make to you right now where you were, like, trying to say yeah. my teammates might kill me for comparing myself to NFL All-Pro. Pro, I think he's All-Pro sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if that's, if that's who you think you are and you have those same abilities, maybe not the same level, but working up to that, don't go, yeah. don't count yourself out of that potential, you know? Like, yeah. that's your goal. That's it. Like, it is what it is, you know? That's facts. I think of it like that's that. That's facts, though. Yeah. Hey, you stress the facts right now. I can't even lie. Hey, I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've written over a thousand quotes for Athletic Minds. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, anyway, pro team. Are you a Falcons guy? I'm, gonna give you, I'm still going to give you a third one. Keep going. <laughs> All right. How about this? How, are, are you a Falcons guy? I I am. I am. I am. Yeah. You got a favorite guy from them? It used to be Julio. Julio was my guy. But then he he did you guys dirty a little bit. A little bit. And he just. Matt was my guy too. And then. <laughs> I'm not gonna make a joke. You know what? You know what? I would say, I would say, like, physicality-wise, Julio. Julio. Okay. Yeah. Like frame and stature-wise, maybe not. But like going to get the ball and then physicality-wise, like that's who I model. That's actually who made me want to play receiver when I was a kid. Watching Julio Jones, and I was like, I can do that. I used to wear the mouthpiece and everything, like. So physicality-wise and like power, power. Nah, mm. No, that's so, fair you comparison. Them all together, you would get... Yourself. Yeah. I got you. You know what's really cool about Julio Jones? I remember yeah. it was 2011, his rookie year. It was the first year I started getting into, like, football cards, believe it or not. And that's yeah. actually what those are. But anyway, I remember collecting that whole 2011 class, and, like, I can name, like, the top, like, 10 draft picks from that. You got, like, Cam, Von Miller... Marcel Darius, you had J.J. Watt in that draft, A.J. Green, Julio. Uh, that draft class is stacked. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think you had uh, you had Kaepernick that year, Andy Dalton that was that year. Yeah, uh, yeah there was a lot of studs there, and it just so happens. <laughs> no, it was a good. You had Tyron Smith with the Cowboys that tackle. Yeah. You had a lot of guys that were. You had, I remember you had Alden Smith, the guy from the 49ers, who got a little bit in trouble. I but he had, a, he had a crazy rookie year. I remember that. Yeah, that was that was a good time. Good year. <laughs> I mean, being a Jets fan, that was not a good year. Well, <laughs> it was really disappointing because it was after. When is it, when is it a good year being a Jets fan? You know, I mean, the, I, I take pride in being like an optimist, you know? Yeah. Like I always try to think of the best. So right now, yeah. after this off season, you know after, what? Okay, this might be a good year. <laughs> you know, I I can't look at the dark side, or else I just won't watch the games. I've seen every Jets game the past, however, since I've been conscious, and wow. my my family is the same way, especially my dad. But you know, I mean, we got to make the playoffs this year. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> man, it's it's been since 2010. It's been 13 years. Like it's it's the longest streak. You know what? This is the year. <laughs> this is the year. This is Jets' year. I'm, 
we'll pray and hope, you know. <laughs> go, Jets, go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, but we'll see about that. Um, yeah, let's. I'm gonna end it up with like a a pretty deep question here. So give me your best best little thought here. If you could go back to your younger self, maybe middle school age, right? What advice would you give that person, and what would be the big message you tell them to keep going? I mean, um, outside of the whole current thing, like that, that would be advice that I would give. But, but the real, the real advice. Especially middle school, that's crazy. Middle school, I lost my father. He died. Uh, he had just heart complications, so he passed away. Sorry, so to hear middle that. School, middle school, me was just, um, I was just uh, really hungry. You know what I mean? I was just really, really driven, and, and, and I was trying to find my way, but but I kind of had my head on straight. And it was because of him. So what I tell myself. <laughs> Probably just tell myself like keep 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 doing what you're doing, go as hard as you can, and make it proud. You know what I mean? Like the, the the things that I've accomplished, the things that I've done, I can't. There's no way that I could have done all this by myself. Like this is through the power of God. God has been in my life so many times and like opened so many doors and. and passages for me and I can't help but to think that my dad is proud somehow, some way. So I would just say like keep what you're doing, my boy, and, and you're gonna make me you gonna make your dad proud, man. You gonna you gonna make everybody proud. Just keep being you. Don't try to be nobody else but you be yourself. Do the damn thing, man. I got you. <laughs> yeah. I love talking to college athletes because they so are, have the goal that they set and they're on track yeah. and the focus level compared to maybe a non-athlete is so advanced yeah. and different that, you know, like you could be, like with what you have now, you could go into any field and like work at the same ethic that you are with football yeah. and be successful in that. So I would be proud yeah. of that. And of course, your your dad's like proud of you too. Trust me. Appreciate that. <laughs> Very nice. And now this could probably, I know the answer maybe, but last question to this. What's your why? What's my why? That's a harder question you think. <laughs> but my why would just be, uh, it would just be, it would just be, and, and it's funny because uh, our why has changed a lot. Like when we do the skull session and they ask our wives all the time, and I, I had to I had to talk to my mom because I was like, "Mom, my why was you? Like it was you guys, it was my dad, and it was you know, people that poured into me." But as you grow, your, your needs and your, your thought processes and your wants, why as they change? But my why has really evolved from you know trying to make everybody else proud. My why now is really just proven to myself it's really me my why is proven to myself that like hmm. bro you really belong here there's a reason why you're here there's a reason why you're doing the things you're doing there's a reason why you meet the people that you meet and whatnot so my my why is is, is definitely just um, doing something that at the end of the day I can be proud of it's all said and done and all of this is over when football is done for me and I'm an old man sitting on the porch like I can look back on my life and be like, proud of myself. That's Absolutely. My All right. I can sense a real emotional intelligence from yourself. So you can be yeah. proud of that as well because it shows that you've grown and able of ca and you're capable of understanding, you know, what's not not that what's more important, but like what the goal should be, not what it is like is in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Try to say that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the the long term, the long term is more important than the immediate, the immediate goal. So. Absolutely, man. And now I'll end it. I'll keep the floor open for you. Do you have any questions for me? Questions for you? Um, 
What would you tell the people? How do you keep them motivated? What's What's the way to stay motivated and keep going when it's when mentally you're drained, physically you're drained? How do you find that that thing inside you to keep going? Well, I think it can go all the way back to what the current why is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, myself, it's been family, I think, trying to make them proud yeah. for so long. But now, I don't want to sound stagnant, but I think I'm on the same path as you because third school of college for me, I moved out, I'm by myself now. Um, lucky enough to be in a new relationship now the past couple months. And I'm just trying to be the best for myself and the best to other people around me that's a whole. And now when you say motivated about outside things, work related, maybe your health, you gotta think about if I don't do that, what happens? Like what happens if I don't take care of myself? What if I don't eat right? Like and not just maybe in the short term, but like in the long term, how does it affect myself? And I think about how then that affects other people. So then um stuff can really change like that. I was about to say, like, when you have other people depending on you too, like, that's a big, that's a big thing people don't think about a lot. It's like, your actions, like, the consequences to your actions, they don't just affect you, they affect the people around you too, so it's, it's bigger than you at the end of the day. Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. I think that was my my only one was just how you how do you keep going? That's it. That's really. It all goes back to what you do it for. That's I mean cliche answer. I think you just said the same thing, but it's <laughs> it's everyone has a different reason behind it though. So it's not like I can't say what I am and then it'd be the same yeah. for you or someone else. It's all exactly. what your mission is, your situation, the people, the different people that could be around you. So. Um, I always like to end on this like sort of note and like wrap it up like this because it shows uh, just like an overall big picture of what we just talked about and now what really matters, the biggest picture. Hey, That's just <laughs> it. Uh, this is a good talk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, deep conversations towards the end of this is what I think keeps the conversations going and keeps people on track also. So now... Yeah just in my conscious now I know I see you and what you're about it's now going to make me like oh wow like I got to stay with him like I got to be like on that yeah, type yeah. of like level in a way of like mentally and it's all good stuff that comes out of listening and talking to people like yourself in this conversation I think that's a big thing that you know especially the world is lacking right now is uh, just talking to each other People, we, we gotta learn how to talk to each other. We gotta learn how to have conversations like this. How you, how you can learn from somebody that's different than you. you know what I mean, and, uh, that's that's really my kind of goal with everything. Is I want to, I want to bridge the gap between opposing sides. I want people to talk to each other. I want to know why why can't we have these conversations? Why can't we understand each other and whatnot? So, absolutely, so definitely. Man. <laughs> Definitely good, good, good podcast. Great, great topics. Great, what you call it? Uh, great um, overall, just theme and everything. I appreciate so, that. I really, <laughs> really appreciate you uh, reaching out and, and asking me if I'll be a guest on this. It's, 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 it's my pleasure, beneficial. man. It's great to get in contact with people at such a high, you know, athletic level as yourself and athletes around you. That athletic minds now has been, you know blessed to be in contact with the reputable to get a, a response you know yeah. um just years of you know putting stuff into it so thank you for that appreciate it so, so for sure man appreciate you all right man uh we'll wrap it up here i thank you for coming on and um i'm gonna wish you the best we'll keep in touch I appreciate you. all right thank you so much <laughs>